All right, it is day two of your official activity with the University of Melbourne. And once again, a big Womanjika all welcome. And welcome to those of you who didn't join us last night. I just wanna say congratulations. This is a huge moment in your lives and we're so excited to have you at the University of Melbourne. So let's get set with tonight. Last night, we looked at life, tips and tricks, getting settled, and of course, getting a jump start on your career. Well, tonight though, we are going to be making sure that you're going to thrive and survive in the academic environment. So I know that there's many of you out there very keen on this. So tonight is all about setting you up for academic success. We have an incredible panel of experts yet again, current students, academics, and our professional staff. They are part of your new community at the University of Melbourne and some of the first faces that you'll meet. But before I get started, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the lands on which we join globally tonight. I join you from the lands of the Wurundjeri people and I pay my respects to their elders past, present and emerging. And for those of you who are new tonight, uh, that was the acknowledgement of country. And that's something really important to us in Australia and at the university. It's our way of recognizing our nation's first people. And for those of you that were here with us yesterday, you'll be very familiar with that. And it's a big part of something that you'll be doing at the University of Melbourne and at other things when you're in Australia. So those of you who were here yesterday, you know the deal. This is about helping answer your questions, making sure that you know what is going on in your community at the University of Melbourne. So if you've got any of those questions, we have an incredible team of expert chatters from right across the university waiting behind the scenes to answer your questions. So make sure to post what's on your mind. And at some point, I will be giving your live questions to our incredible guests that I'll be joined by tonight. So make sure to post and keep our chatters nice and busy. And this is again about you. And that's one of my biggest tips for university is if you've got a question, ask. If you need help, ask. So I think it's time. Let's get down to making sure that you survive and thrive in the academic environment. We're gonna set you up for success, uh, for academic success. So this is what it's all about tonight. And so my very first guest is incredibly well-placed to give you what you need to know all about planning, uh, I guess, looking at what it's like, your tips for the academic environment. Now, later on, I know already there's probably questions going into chat right now about course planning. So, oh, how do I pick my subjects? How do I enroll in a subject? What if a subject's full? Uh, how do I pick majors? Well, we have special segments tonight that are just for you on course planning. Uh, next up, we will be speaking directly about course planning for undergrads, and then we'll have a special session for all of our graduate students in the audience tonight. The first section, though, is for everyone, and that's where we are going to get those tips and tricks, things you can be doing right now to get ahead. So here is my very first incredible guest, Please wake, make welcome academic skills advisor, Ha Nguyen. Are you there, Ha? Hello. Hi, Zoe. Thank I'm definitely so here. Thank it's you so very much for that great introduction and welcome everyone. Well, thank well, you so much for joining us. Now, I believe you've actually got some special guests yourself, so you didn't come alone. You brought a crack team of student experts. So. I think that I'm going to head off screen and I'm going to watch and I'm going to learn for next time that I'm studying some incredible things from you and the team. So over to you. Thank you very much, Zoe. Um, and that is correct with me today. I've got three wonderful current students of the University of Melbourne who will share their experience of their first year as an international student at the university. Um, first, first of all, I would like to um, tell you about who I am and you know what my work is. I'm, her, I'm from Academic Skills. I'm an Academic Skills Advisor. I earned a PhD from the University of Melbourne myself six years ago and since then I've been um, working in this position to support students across disciplines, across 
um, you know, levels of study, to excel in the study. Um, academic skills is a central service at the university that um, caters to all students in all disciplines to help them succeed in their studies. Um, we help them to develop their professional skills, academic skills, study skills, communication skills, writing skills, to tackle all assignments and um, all sorts of assessments that come their way. So that's what we do. And before I do a demonstration of our new website, I want to in introduce our excellent panelists today. First of all, Nicole, Yes, Would you like I'm to say here. a few words? Yep. Hi everyone, my name is Nicole and I'm from China actually. And I'm doing my second year in the Bachelor of Design, majoring in property. Yeah, it's a really good time to share my experience in my um regarding to my previous experience in like two years. Great, wonderful. Thanks, Nicole. Uh, next up we have Raphael. Could you uh, turn on your webcam as well? Thank you. Yes, thank you, Hop. Hi, everyone. I would like to express my gratitude for everyone coming here. My name is Raphael Chen. I'm currently in my third year Bachelor of Commerce, majoring in Finance and Economics. I also have a concurrent diploma in Computing. If you later you have any question interesting, feel free to ask me. I will really be pleased to answer all the questions. Thank you. And finally, we have Roshin. Where are you, Roshin? I'm here. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this session. I'm Rasheen. I graduated a Bachelor of Biomedicine back in 2018, and I'm currently in my fourth and final year of the Doctor of Dental Surgery. Um, I am an international student as well, and I'm from two countries, the Seychelles and Sri Lanka. Thank you very much, uh, everyone. And um, just to visualize what we do at academic, academic skills and how we can help everyone, succeeded the study. I'm going to share my screen right now and that's the website uh, of academics where you can find all information about what we do. So can everyone see my screen? So this is our new website and uh, to get to this website you can simply search for in any browser you can search for academic skills Unimail. And here we are, top of the list. And once you get there, you can have a look at um, the range of services that we offer to everyone at the university. Um, if you're new to academic skills, you can certainly click on that first button there. There's an introductory video of what we do uh, from the student's perspective and how much we've helped them manage their time, um, succeed in their assignments and the like. And down here, uh, this is an overview of what we offer. We offer online learning modules, which are short, interactive, interesting modules for you to learn a range of skills, like you know how to write an essay, how to um, manage your time, how to um, really maybe be, be more confident in speaking English in front of an audience. That's oral presentation. We have a little bit of everything on um, our LMS site. We have English language development resources as well. And if you click on this link, it will take you there. Everything that we have on offer, including programs, uh, free workshops and individual tutorials to help you improve your English. And we have workshops about writing, about assessments and different types of writing throughout the year as well. Um, this link here is to our uh, one-on-one -on -one service, okay? We have drop-ins, we have um, individual tutorials that are a bit longer, but you need to book through the stop one booking system. And uh, some key resources that will help you get started um, in your study. So about online collaboration, what works in the online environment, what works um, to get the most out of tutorials and lectures. Um, we even have a semester planner for you to download and use. It's all there, right? It's just at the tip of your finger. Check us out. And if you go back to the home page, down, uh, if you scroll down the page, you should be able to access other resources. So there's a very um, extensive list of what we do. 
including topics from editing your writing to working with others, how to study effectively, how to learn online, um, and there's a dedicated section for graduate researchers as well. So check that out. And our key mission is to help you to develop academic and professional skills you need for your studies and beyond. And it's a free service. Um, and it's not just for people who are struggling, it's for people who simply want to do better, all right? So I recommend that you engage with academic skills, at the very least engaging with our website from day one. Now, over to our panelists, I would like to ask them, maybe first, Nicole, um, what was your experience like in your first year as an international student at the University of Melbourne? And did you encounter any main challenges that you want to share today? Um, in terms of my, of my first year in the university, um, I think it's quite, quite challenging to like make friends with, well, um, not only people from China, but also international um, people. No, like uh, in China, um, English is not my native English, uh, language. And it's kind of hard to um, reach out to people. Um, and it's, um, it's challenging to do that as um, um, new to hear a student, a student here, new to hear. And I try to solve that by studying um, more English um, communication and try to improve that as well um, by looking at some um, shows such as like Young Sheldon um, <clears throat> and like, um, to improve that. <laughs> yeah, that's an I'm excellent really tip. right now. <laughs> yeah, I, I think, you know, many of us, um, will agree that making friends, especially in the online environment, is a key challenge. And that's true for everyone, not just international students. So thank you for sharing that really true challenge um, when you first started out and how you overcame that as well. So, you know, actively engaging with the Australian culture through media, through movies, I think that's a great way to go about it. Now over to you, Raphael. Um, do you want to share, you know, what struck you about the, the university environment when you first started out and, you know, challenges, if you had any, thank you. Yes, thank you, Ha. Um, actually, I also confronted some problems that uh, Nicole just mentioned. To make friends as an international student, especially when we struggle in speaking fluent English, um, my approach was to join some student clubs. And based on my experience, I have personally categorized the student clubs into two. The first is a professional club, and the second one is social club. Professional club is where people with the same career mindset come together for the sake of professional interest. They will provide you lots of professional workshops on how to build on your employability skills. Really a good, um, a good somewhere to find people with same career. And the second one is social interest club. You can find people with the similar interests and that's where you can start to make your peer friend and close friend. Try to approach the club when you come back to Melbourne and then try to make friends, try to start your uni life there. You will find that the environment in the campus is very, very interesting and colorful. Yeah, great. Yeah, I think what you said, uh, Raphael, resonated with what Nicole said. So a, a key challenge for both of you was um, making friends and how to, to reach out to people. And I think um, that's always a challenge. But um, I think uh, what academic skills can offer in this space is our resources on how to reach out to other, how to um, study actively and active learning includes how to form a study group, how to reach out to not just your peers, but also academics in your field, right? And we have tips, we have even the language that can help you to achieve that confidence um, and that, you know, active attitude right from day one. So check us out. And everything can be accessed from the resource that I just showed you. Um, over to Roshin. Do you have anything to add to Nico and Raphael's experiences? Yeah, um, sure. I 
thoroughly enjoyed my first year moving here to a foreign country and really immersed into like the culture and everything Melbourne has to offer um, because Melbourne itself is a very multicultural super diverse place and there's something for everyone which was really good but I think something I definitely struggled with was I grew up in a country where there was only 85,000 people so very very small and then coming to Melbourne um, the University of Melbourne itself has close to 50,000 students so that itself was like my entire country so one thing I initially struggled with was I guess navigating through campus and truly under I truly underestimated the size of it um, but yeah, going back to what I guess what Nicole, Raphael and what Ha you've said and even at the start what Zoe was saying, I think it's really, really important to be resourceful, ask for help. There's so much um, support services uh, on campus, there's information desks online, you can reach out and um, I think actively seeking help is what is what, where you can learn and make better your entire experience. So for example, for me, um, how it made it a lot easier and smoother and like bettered my transition was definitely used um, through uh, one of the uh, information desks. They told me about this app called Lost on Campus and you just have to download it. It shows you where um, you can just type in different places and your tutorial rooms, everything comes up. It also gives you the closest bathroom where you can fill up your water bottle, um, food places that you can, as Nicole and Raphael said, maybe suggest to your new friends, you can go grab a bite. So yeah, I think it's um, really, really important to be resourceful. That would be my biggest tip. Um, yeah, but other than that, Melbourne Uni itself, as, as well as the city has so much to offer. Yep, thanks. Thanks for that tip. And I think uh, resourcefulness and help seeking um, is a great skill to develop, not just for academic success, but for your career and other pursuits as well. Because obviously, um, you know, no one can achieve um, anything, you know, substantial on, on their own. It's, it's, it's always, you know, a team effort. Uh, we always have to sort of rely on each other. And it's the in interdependence um, of, of life that... Um, that is really, uh, really vibrant um, in the campus community that we have. So thanks for sharing the idea of using apps and tools and online resources to navigate, not just the physical, but also the virtual world um, of the university. Yeah, so uh, in terms of the top tips that helps you through university, in terms of, you know, study tasks and uh, reading load, for example, what, what did you find helpful? Maybe if I go to Nicole first. So my tips for um, studying successfully in university. Yes, um, for that, I would like to talk about the assignment rubric. So you definitely want to have a look at the rubric first before you start the assignment, because that's um, where you get the points. And in terms of doing that, you need to um, access to the rubric first and then try to see um, each section about um, like whether it's a fluency and grammar and reference. They all give point. Uh, also, in um, regarding to the reference, I wanted to talk about, um, I'll say the, if you Google um, UNML library citation, there are like a bunch of um, citation suggestions regarding to um, many um, different styles of referencing which will be really helpful in your um, assignment of writing. Great. Great tips. Thank you, Nicole. I think the, the point about referencing is really important, especially when you come from a culture that, um, you know, doesn't emphasize referencing or academic honesty. I think um, at the university, academic honesty is key to achieving um, high in, in your studies. Um, it's about referencing correctly, giving credit to authors that you use in your, in, in your writing. So it's great to explore all those requirements ahead of time, right? And as Nicole pointed out to us, um, there are different phases to addressing an assessment task or a study task. And you need to make sure that you plan your time ahead to make sure that you go through all those stages, right? The referencing stage, but also the researching stage, the um, analyzing the questions stage all those stages take time and so you know our advice to you is to start from day one to plan your time use a planner which you can find on academic skills website um Raphael what was the top tip for you in your, your first year yep so I think 
uh, my topic is basically to go to club or some online uh, social media platform to seek for friends who can study together and then form a study group. And also you can look for some people, some students who have already done the subject you are taking, ask them for tips. So for instance, when I was taking the uh, introductory and intermediate microeconomics, I asked my um, I asked my friends who have already done this before, and they just said me, you need to take notes, take the graph, try to draw, and then I got each one. So basically, try to make friends, and you know what's going to be in your, what's the orientation that you can basically follow to complete the subject. Yep. That's really sage advice. Yep. Reach out to others uh, from early days. Don't go it alone, right? You don't have to go it alone. We are in this together. Just ask questions. Um, yeah. And just be friendly. Say hi. Sometimes people are just a, a high away from, you know, making friends. How, how about you, Roshin? Do you have any top tip to share with our students today? Yeah, I completely agree with what both Nicole and Raphael were saying. Um, if I were to add, I think it's very important from the get go to sort of know when your assignments are, when your um, potential like um, exams throughout the semester is so that you can structure it accordingly. Um, and I online, like how I was mentioning before, you have access to these um, planners that you can download and you can um, fill them in beforehand. Um, it's also really important that you, if you ever are struggling whatsoever, um, what, be it uh, professionally or anything, it's very important that you seek support. The university offers so much online um, and given the situation of the world, there is things both in person and online that you can seek. So that's really important. And it's uh, the good thing about the web Website, it's really friend, like really easy to use and um, navigate through it. So yeah, I think it's really, really important that you seek help when if you ever are in doubt. I just thought I would jump in here. I've been watching, I've been learning a lot from all of you. And we're down to one question left. And I want to put one of our live questions from the audience to the group. But I also want to point out, remember that we are posting important links for you right there in the chat so make sure you can follow along with everything that Ha has shown you those links have been provided so keep a watch out for that tonight because that's going to give you fast access to everything um one of the things that our audience is really keen to know about that's you talked perfectly Rasheen about help um a lot of students, whether they're international or whether they've grown up in Australia, are really nervous when they start university, whether it's undergrad or grad. What advice would you give students feeling a little bit nervous about asking for help and worrying that it looks like a weakness? Um, what advice would you give them to get over that anxiety? Um, yeah, I think it's important to remember that as students, we're here to learn and then we're here to grow as individuals, not only in academics, but in multiple facets. So I think it's really important to remember that seeking support is an opportunity for you to learn and to better yourself. I also think we're as individuals, we want to learn and, and it's a great resource that the pro university provides. But at the end of the day, I think um, it's not just you're in that same boat, like every Everyone who is here today, we all have questions. Um, this, I was once a fresh, uh, like a fresher, a new student here. I had so many questions, and I too know exactly what you mean. I think it's really also important to understand that the university is staffed with incredible people who are experts in their field. They're very, they're very professional, and they're super friendly. And honestly, um, they will cater to whatever you can, what, whatever they can, whatever is within their scope. They will definitely support you. So I think in order for you to make your experience a little bit better and to make it um, smoother for you, it's really important to ask those questions. The nerves, I get them too, but um, I'm just telling you that they, the professionals, they know how to handle you. And once you, once you do, if you don't enjoy something or if you're not happy with what you get, you can always just back out. So there's always that option. No one's forcing you to be there. So yeah. I think that's wonderful advice. I particularly loved the quote from you about that we're all here to learn. And I think that we're all keeping learning. And part of that is asking questions. So that's just that idea. Don't hesitate. You're not meant to know everything. So you won't suddenly find yourselves exposed and kicked out. We want your questions. We want to help you. Um, I'm going to put a different question to you, Raphael. 
Now, cast your mind back to where our audience is when before you started classes and what is the one thing about uh, in terms of academic preparedness that they could be doing now or one thing that you think will set them up really well to thrive in the academic environment? What do you wish you knew when you were sitting here in a similar situation? So actually what I really want to learn is, um, is to hear about the student who have already taken this subject or the student who have already graduated our alumni, how did that ever experience? And is there any top tip that they should go? And I was really so lucky that when I joined the school at the first week, I joined a professional club and the president just speak something inspirational. He asked me to seek for leadership to save for volunteering experience, to grow my mindset, to have a growth mindset that uh, encouraged me to dare to ask the question, dare to challenge, and finally dare to seek for any kind of opportunity. And so if I were still a first year student, then I will make, then the first thing that I want to hear is what are the opportunities that I can get from the school and how am I able to utilize this opportunity to grow? Wonderful. And that's what it's about, isn't it? It's about growing. So excellent words of advice there, Raphael. Um, Nicole, um, we saw a lot of different services and options and they're all available to you. So check out the, the, the chat. All of those links are there, but you can also go through your student portal that we talked about yesterday. But Nicole, which of the kinds of services and support to do with academic skills did you personally find really helped you the most? So if you had to pick one, what helped set you up for a bit more success that you may have been struggling with academically? Um, which name? Sorry, I just... Yeah, that's you, Nicole. So which, which of all the incredible services that Ha spoke about um, mm -hmm. did you find really helped you? Was it... Uh, I guess about referencing, was it about academic writing workshops or any of the planners and those things online? So what personally helped you? I personally think that um, referencing in the academic skill hub is really important. Um, you know, like um, citation referencing, they might be most um, really difficult. But once you um, have a look at the page and try to figure out the pattern of the citation. That won't be a problem. And the, one of the tips I would like to give the first year student is that um, try to um, step away from your comfort zone and try to reach out um, the opportunity in the university. Wonderful. Final question for you, Ha. You're an expert, you've come through, you've done a PhD. What is your number one study tips. So you're studying for exams. Different things probably work for different people, but what works best for you when you really needed to prepare for an exam? I think to have a brief answer um, is to start early, start preparing for exams early. So normally exams come at the very last moment of the semester, in the last um, you know few weeks of, of, of the semester. And um, if people just start preparing for exams, um, you know, 10 days before or, you know, several days, several days before, they're cramming and that's not uh, eff effective at all in any circumstances. So start early, start from day one, plan for your exams, you know, from the first week and everything, all uh, assessments are aligned so that they sort of accumulate um, your knowledge for the exams and be active in doing so. So do something to the knowledge and with the knowledge rather than just trying to absorb everything passively. So those are my key advice. So treat it like a marathon and not a sprint. Um, thank you so much, Ha. You really delivered on bringing us some wonderful experts along with you. Thank you for bringing your special guests, Rasheen, Nicole and Raphael. Good luck with your studies this year. We really appreciated having you here. And I know that our audience all throughout the world probably got something really valuable. And make sure that you say hello to them if you spot them on campus or on camera. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Zoe. Bye for now. Bye. 
Okay, there you have it. The first top tips for you with preparing you for academic success. Now, this next moment is we're going to focus on course planning for undergraduate students. So if you're a graduate student, you are welcome to join us because our next speaker is the same speaker that will be speaking for you. And she's really entertaining and pretty incredible. But if you do have other things that you want to do, um, absolutely come back and see us in half an hour and she'll be here waiting for you with your own customized tips. Now, I know so many students with so much choice at university, it can get really baffling, Belinda. And this is why we have the queen of course planning with us today. No, she really is gonna live up to this. This is the incredible Belinda O'Dowd. And I know that so many of you, this is a hot topic. Courses, majors, enrolling in subjects, we are in good hands. And I'm gonna leave you in Belinda's good hands. I'll see you all later where I will be putting your questions to Belinda. Keep our chatters busy and I'll see you soon. Over to you, Belinda. Thank you so much, Zoe. It's an absolute pleasure to be here. Um, and I guess on behalf of course planning, uh, welcome to the university community. We are absolutely stoked to have you here. Um, as Zoe said, course planning can seem a little bit overwhelming with so much choice that you have. But again, we're a dedicated team to help you. I could talk about course planning all day. So what I thought might be the most helpful thing to do actually go through some of the resources to help you understand exactly how to plan your course and what your options are. So I've got a few resources that I'll take you through um, and the links will be put in the chat. Uh, so the first thing that I would, oh, sorry, bear with me for one moment. Make sure I share the right screen. And you know what, for those that want some tips for online learning, we've got an incredible learning environments team that I plugged last night. You can come back um, in just um, an hour and a half where you can learn about the incredible things that we're doing with online delivery. And uh, we'll be making sure to give you some good screens. So with that message over, back to you, Belinda. So we're just confirming that you can see the handbook page in front of you. I can, it's perfect. Fabulous, okay, excellent. Um, so when it comes to planning your course and thinking about the subjects that you're going to do or the major that you're going to, to pursue, the first point of call should be the handbook. So the handbook is where you get all the information about your subjects, your majors, your course itself, and really should be the first go to to figure out what's going on and what you have to do to meet the requirements of your degree. So I thought I'd give you an example of how to actually look at the handbook and some things to look out for. So we might start with the Bachelor of Science. So you'll see here that the course itself has an entry. Um, so it's got an overview, the course structure, majors, minors and specialisations. So a big thing to look for is the actual course structure. So this is exactly what you need to complete to be able to get a Bachelor of Science. Um, so you'll see it has certain requirements um, and points, but I'll explain that when we get to subjects a little bit later. Um, but it really gives you an overview of all of the different types of subjects that you need to study in order to complete your degree. Of course, it's important to have an understanding of what your entire degree looks like, but really what we're focusing on for this year is the subjects that you're interested in doing in 2022. Um, and we'll discuss that a little bit later as well. Um, but it's really important to become familiar with the structure of your course and exactly what it is that you have to study. There's also some additional rules to make sure that you're, you're meeting all of those requirements. Um, progression rules, it will list any compulsory subjects, and there's also a list of science discipline subjects, so anything that is considered a um, science discipline subject, and also breadth, but I'll go into breadth a little bit later as well, it's one of the most exciting things about the Melbourne model. So when you're looking at your course and thinking about planning your course, the course structure on your course um, entry in the handbook is the best place to go to get a little bit of an understanding about exactly what it is that you have to do. The other really important 
bit on the course entry of your handbook is majors, minors, and specializations. So for most of our undergraduate courses, you do have to do at least one major um, to complete the requirements of your degree. Some offer double majors or majors and minors, but it really depends on the course that you're in as to what you can actually fit into your course. And that's where course structure is really important to get an understanding of the overview of your course. So you can see here a major itself is 50 credit points of study at level three. Um, and it's got a handbook entry for every single major do within the Bachelor of Science. I think there's 42 last time I checked, so lots of choice. And what you can do is actually go into um, a, a major entry. If we look at data science as an example, um, a very emerging field. Um, there's also the structure of what the data science um, major looks like. So to get a major in data science, it looks like you have to do these four subjects. And it tells you which study period they're in and how many credit points they are as well. So when we think back to the course structure, it was saying 62.5 credit points of level one. So generally speaking, subjects are 12.5 credit points. So 62.5 means a minimum of five subjects in that particular area. So be mindful of credit points when you are looking at the handbook entry for a subject. And you can actually go into the subject entry as well. So a good way for science or with, with any of the courses is to look at the majors that you might be interested in. Have a look at the subjects. Um, and subjects also have an entry in the handbook. So a really important thing about the handbook entries for subjects, the first is available. So this is when in 2022, the subject is going to be taught and it will also let you know how it will be delivered. Um, so there's three different delivery uh, details uh, that we have and noting that we've only confirmed the delivery details for the first half year um, of 2022. Um, and for the second half year, so semester two, um, they will be um, updated once we have more information. But linear statistical models, um, it's listed as a dual delivery subject, which means that you there may be classes on campus that you are in Melbourne, but it also means that you can study it completely online. So anything that's dual delivery or online means that you can study it wherever you are in the world. Um, and that's the same all the way through to your final exam. Your study plan where you enroll in subjects um, won't have the most up-to-date delivery details. So you can sort of ignore the delivery details on your study plan where you actually tick the box to enroll in subjects. The handbook really is your go-to to understand the delivery details for particular subjects. So that's one really important thing. The other thing that you can look at um, and just peruse is the assessment. So it actually tells you exactly what you have to do to complete the um, assessment requirements of the subject and dates and times. So this is also an important uh, tab to get to know when it does come to your subjects and it also has who your coordinator is, how many contact hours you have and when the teaching period is. These dates are also really important but you'll get to know them um, once you actually get settled into the university. The other really important thing in the handbook for subjects is the eligibility and requirements. So this is where it will tell you if there are any subjects or background knowledge that you need to be able to enroll into this subject and succeed. Um, so linear statistical models is a major subject and it's a level three subject. And the way that you can tell that a subject, what, what level a subject is, is the first number here. So this is a level three subject. So generally speaking, you would do level three subjects in your third year. And we can see that statistics, which is a level two subject, is something that you would probably study most likely in your second year of studies. So what you can actually do is work backwards from your major. So we know we wanna do data science. We know we have to do linear statistical models. To get into linear statistical models, oh, we know that we need to do statistics. So we can actually have a look at statistics and do it all again, the same thing. So going to eligibility and requirements um, and we need one of these subjects. So oh, we need another level two subject, which is probability. We can go into probability, 
have a look at the eligibility and requirements and we can see the level one prerequisites here. So generally speaking, what you'd be one subjects that you need uh, for the majors that you are interested in to study this year in 2022 to then progress through uh, to your major subjects in 2024. Um, and that will come around very quickly. Um, another, so um, just be mindful, you can actually work backwards from the handbook, um, noting that you'd be looking for the level one subjects for 2022. And again, you can see all of the, the availabilities for these subjects as well. So the handbook is the first place you'll go. I will course to get a bit of an understanding about um, what you have to do as a whole. And then you can sort of drill down backwards, working backwards into the level one subjects um, that you need to do for your major. In saying that, there's lots of different considerations when it comes to actually selecting your subjects. So one big thing that I think people uh, forget about is interests. What are you interested in? What do you want to study? What do you like? Um, so that there's certain requirements that you need to do um, in, you know, there might be a minimum of five level one science subjects, and you might only need three of those to meet the prerequisites for your major subjects. So you've got two subjects, which you can do anything in science. Um, so really consider your interests. Um, maybe it's something that you really loved in high school, or maybe it's something that you didn't, you've never heard of before, and you didn't get the opportunity to study in high school. So really take into account your interests. We went through major, um, so you need to make sure that you are meeting all of the prerequisites, so that the prior knowledge that you need for your major subjects um, in your first and second years. So that's a big um, consideration when it does come to selecting your subjects. The other thing is graduate study. If you've got something in mind that you're really interested in doing, as an example, the doctor of dentistry, you want to become a dentist. There's a master's program uh, that you need to study after your undergraduate degree. And there might be requirements uh, to get into that master's degree, certain prerequisite subjects that you might need. So something to consider there. Also complementary subjects. So you might be doing a chemistry major um, and mathematics goes really well to help you sort of understand and get a well-rounded view of exactly what's happening in chemistry. So thinking about complementary subjects and these considerations are really both subjects and for breadth subjects. So you could actually use your breadth subjects for interest or potentially even to meet prerequisites for graduate study that you might be interested in. Um, so lots of things to mull around um, and consider. And there's two just as valid ways to go through. So we went working backwards. So if you know the, the major or the graduate study pathway that you, you want to do, yes, I'm going to be a dentist, you can actually work backwards to understand exactly what you need to do to choose your level one subjects. Or um, just as valid, you might work um, so you might pick two or three different types of level one subjects and you see how we go, see what I like. Um, generally, there is heaps of flexibility to change pathways or change directions, even right up, even once you've finished your first year of studies. Um, and that's where uh, there's heaps of resources available online to help you understand if you do want to change direction or exactly what you can fit in and how to keep lots of different options open. Lots of things to consider, um, but there's also lots of help. Uh, so I would also strongly recommend that you have a look at your faculty course planning resources, because for each faculty, there's a lots of sample course plans, enrollment resources, um, lots of things that you can have a look at. The most exciting thing that I want to share with you, though, is my course planner. So we have an interactive course planner, um, which pulls all of the rules from the handbook um, and you get to actually choose your subjects to see how it fits in with the rules and where your flexibility is. If you haven't had a chance to have a play yet, I'd highly recommend it. Um, and I'll show you what it looks like. I've put commerce here as an example to start in semester one 2022 and it automatically pulls in all of the core subjects that you have to do. So you don't have to worry about the core subjects. But what you can also do is select your major. Let's say finance as an example. Would you like to add all the core subjects? Yes, please. And what it will actually do is add the core subjects to your degree 
And because they're level three subjects, they're put in the third year of your course. And this will tell you, oh, what's this little red cross here? This will show you. Um, so what you can do with the prerequisites, if we look at this subject here, you can actually drop and, oh, we can drop and drag that little subject onto your study plan. You know you have to do it. Um, so you can actually add it to your study plan there. We also know we need one of these subjects. So let's put quantitative methods two as a subject here. And then that actually ticks off. You've now met the requirements uh, for these subjects. Oh, now we've got quantitative methods too. What do we have to do to do that? We need one of these and we'll go quantitative methods one. So this actually really helps you to understand and work backwards exactly how, how to meet the, the prerequisites for your major subjects. It also helps you um, drill down your subject choices. So if we have a look at this, and it tells you what you've ticked off. So we need 25 credit points of level three core major already on there. They pulled them on there at the start, but we also need 12.5 credit points of level three finance electives. So if we search for there, this pulls up your level three finance options. So it's a really exciting tool to have a play around with. Um, and I'd really encourage you to have a really good play around it, around with it, each time you um, create a plan, it's a unique URL. So you could have two or three on the go. And what you can do um, is actually email these plans, the URL to us, and we can check it for you. We can say, hey, yeah, you're meeting all the requirements or, you know, I wanna be a teacher. I wanna be a secondary teacher and do history. How do I fit that in? And we can actually help you to build your plan um, that you can sort of move around as you go. So I'd strongly encourage you to have a look at my course planner. Oh, sorry, excuse me. There's also um, the other very exciting thing about the Melbourne model, and I'll just touch on this really quickly, is breadth subjects. I think breadth is so wonderful because you get the opportunity to study something outside of your main discipline. I was actually a Bachelor of Commerce student at the University of Melbourne. I'm not telling you how long ago, uh, but I've stuck around since then because I love the institution so much. Um, but I was a Bachelor of Commerce student and I got to study amazing agriculture subjects. Um, I got to study Australia in the wine world a wine tasting subject it was absolutely fabulous um, and what you can actually do is all breadth tracks on the online um, handbook and if you hit the subjects tab you can also check breadth for courses so if we have a look at breadth in the bachelor of biomedicine there are a lot of options available but what we can do at least for first year for 2022, we are just looking at level one subjects because we know that we only want to have a look at level one subjects for first year. And maybe let's try just semester one. Let's just have a look at the options that we have for level one subjects that are medicine that um, are in semester one. It takes a little while to load, but 115, it's still a lot. Um, but it does make it a little bit easier to sort of um, have a look through what your options are and you can filter further as well um, with the areas of study and also the faculties and departments. So the handbook really is key and has all of the information that you need. Very quickly, um, I know this was a whiz bang rip through how to course plan, um, but the handbook and the resources online and my course planner are so helpful and will really help you to understand exactly what's going on and what you have to do. Um, but there's also help. Of course, there's help. Um, so there is, if you have an issue, uh, there'll be a service to help you. So I'd highly recommend becoming very familiar with the services directory as well. And this also has the wonderful academic um, skills that, that you just heard from, health and welfare, careers and employability, academic skills, even admin and IT, extra support. Um, and there's also um, course planning. So I'm gonna give my team a little plug because I think we're wonderful, but you can actually have a look at our course advice and enrollment assistance webpage. Um, and just lots of stuff to read before actually booking an appointment, but you can book an appointment. Um, so we are currently offering um, Zoom, so virtual appointments and also telephone appointments. 
Um, hot tip, you heard it here today, appointments for the day generally open around 8.30 in the morning of. Um, so we are a very popular service. Um, so if it looks like you can't book an appointment, try at 8.30 Australian Eastern Standard Time, and there should be plenty of appointments that day. So lots of help available. Definitely look at the handbook, lots of things to consider. So I'd really encourage you to have a think about what it is that you want to achieve. But note, there's so much help um, if you do decide to change your direction or, or add a major or pivot. Um, and you can come in and have a chat to us. So again, whiz, whiz bang, um, very quick, uh, but open to a couple of questions if you've got time. That was incredibly helpful, Belinda, and I think that so many of our audience right around the world are having a sigh of relief right now. And I think that that's been the theme. It's about the help is there. We want to set you up for success. And Belinda's actually one of the people that do that. So Belinda, you spoke, I just want to talk a little bit more about breadth again. There is so much choice. Can we just focus a little bit more on those strategies for picking breadth? Because I know it's one of the things that sets the university apart. It's one of the ways that we prepare students to have fantastic careers and careers of the future. Can we talk a little more about strategy and different approaches students take? Because it's one that they ask a lot of questions about. What's your Absolutely. Absolutely. So, and this is probably not the answer that you after, but it's so individual. Um, and you, there are thousands of different combinations, but there's languages if you want to develop a language skill. Um, there's computer science if you want to learn some coding. Even things like education subjects, if you're considering becoming a teacher, um, you can sort of try things out. I really encourage you to try different things that you're interested in out. I would also probably recommend having a look um, at the assessment um, as well to see how that will fit in with all of your, your other courses. But it is just such a wonderful thing. And speak to as many different people as you can. Um, I heard from the, the previous session, get, getting into clubs and societies. I can't recommend that enough. Um, speaking to your peers about what they have chosen and doing a lot of research. So really having a look at what all of your options are. Um, some things like students who want to get into the doctor of medicine as an example, which is quite a competitive program, you have to go to an interview. So maybe a communication skill um, could be a really excellent choice for you. Um, so I would really encourage you to think about what it is that you are really looking to achieve um, and what you're interested in. Um, again, it might be something that you loved in high school um, or it might be something that you've, you've never heard of. So really do a deep dive into the handbook entries. Um, the overview has a really excellent um, summary of what the subject is actually about um, and keywords or, or phrases will, will jump out to you. Brilliant. I've always said that when you're picking between subjects in general, you get a good sense if something's for you, if you get quite excited about a subject or you know you've chosen even the right major or breadth track, uh, if you can't pick between all the subjects, it's a really good sign that that's good for you. I think there was some really wonderful advice and I know that everyone got a lot out of that, including me. So I would like at this point to wish all of our undergraduate students the very, very best and let you know that we will be hosting in an hour's time a special program on dual delivery and online for those of you who are not able to make it, but those of you that also want to take a bit of a glimpse into what learning and teaching looks like in 2022. And we've got some other incredible experts there. So that's for both undergraduates and graduate students. You can also stay if you're a Belinda super fan, because even though she will be putting the spotlight on graduate right now, um, you still might get a bit of a refresher of those places and the handbook and the things that she looked at. But for those of you jumping off our Welcome to Melbourne train, I just want to say a very big final for now, Woman Jaika or Welcome to the University of Melbourne. It has been my absolute delight getting to welcome you to our big community that is all over the world. So whether you are going to be on campus or 
offshore studying with us. You are very much all part of the university and we're excited to have you here. So don't forget in an hour time, you can come and get more of an insight into that. And for those graduate students that may have been sticking around, we're gonna give you a short break and we're gonna give Belinda a short break. We're going to play some music from a Melbourne electronic band. And when you hear that music end, we will be coming back with more of Belinda and putting the spotlight on graduate course planning. So bye for now and we'll see you all back shortly for more. From <laughs> Okay, and we're back. Now, get settled to our graduate students and welcome back. Those of you that stopped out to do something else, maybe check your messages, maybe some uh, academic skills preparation from what we learn in the next session. But this session is all about you and all of your questions about how do I pick subjects? How do I pick towards the career that I want? And how do I just go about dealing with all of this choice? We've all been there, we understand, and that is why she's back for more. The queen of course planning, please welcome back Belinda. Thanks for sticking around for our grad students. Thank you for having me Zoe, again. Um, that was a funky tune, so I hope everybody enjoys that. Um, that rides to me up immensely. Um, so again... <laughs> Melbourne made. So I'm going to leave everyone in your hands. And again, if we do still have some of our undergraduate audience members there, you can stick around because, of course, there will be things that might actually remind you of what you just learned. Key tip, though, keep asking if you don't remember it all now and follow the really good links in the chat. All right, you're in fabulous hands. Uh, Barry and I are going to go and watch and learn more about what to do when we plan for our grad course. Um, I'll be back with some questions from the audience later and you're all in good hands. Bye, Belinda. Thanks, Zoe. Um, so yes, uh, again, um, if you had joining us again, a huge welcome to the University of Melbourne community. We are so excited to have you. Um, so my name is Belinda and I'm from the course planning team um, at Stop One, part of Student Services, um, and just wanted to take you through some of the, the resources that you should be really familiar with um, when you are thinking about planning your course and choosing your subjects. Um, so there are quite a lot of similarities to the undergraduate students, but there's a few little tips and tricks that I'd like to share with you for graduate students as you move into sort of a more advanced level of study. So here we go. Again, the handbook. I can't reiterate enough how important the handbook is to understand the requirements of your course and what all of your different subject options are. So what I thought I would do is have a look at a graduate level um, course in the handbook. You can search by either the, um, the code for your course, um, which is MC McCon for Master of Communications, Master of Marketing Communications, or you can type in Master of Marketing Communications. It is a pretty clever search, so it will come up with um, sort of when you type in. Again, the overview is important to have a bit of an understanding about what it is that you have to do, um, how many credit points that your course actually is. If you were here for the last session, um, you would have heard me say that uh, the vast majority of subjects are 12.5 credit points. That differs a little bit for graduate study. So it's really important to be mindful of the credit points for subjects um, when you are looking at what you would like to do. And a standard load um, would be 50 credit points per half year period. Um, so that's for semester, 50 credit points for semester one, but that also includes summer term subjects or um, February subjects and second half year, which is mainly semester two, but also includes maybe July subjects or November subjects. Um, so we're looking at 50 credit points per half year period um, to complete um, within the, the time, so within a full time study load. So again, overview really important. A big thing with master's degrees or graduate study is that your course coordinators, you're a smaller cohort, 
coordinators are um, really available to answer more complex questions about the content or pathways, or you're picking between two electives um, based on what, what it is that you want to achieve from your degree. So I'd really encourage you to sort of save these email addresses um, for your coordinators. Um, so their email addresses are there. A big tip for you, I would always in any email to any of your academic staff or even to professional staff or stop one, always include your full name and your student number. It just makes it a lot easier and there's much less back and forth. Really mindful of the contact for your course. So your course coordinator. Again, course structure to understand exactly what it is that you need to do to complete the requirements of your degree. At a master's level, sometimes there's different entry points. Um, so you might be coming in with um, general advanced standing um, and it will show the different entry point um, requirements um, on the course structure. Another really important thing to note with graduate courses is also the capstone option. So most graduate courses Requirement. And capstone is sort of a big, meaty, juicy subject that you do right at the end of your course that pulls together everything you've learned in your graduate program um, in sort of a, a particular area. So there's projects um, or there's coursework or there's also thesis subjects or internships. Um, so it's really important to have a look at what the cap, like if there is a capstone option for you, what it is that you need to do to work towards that. I would say, especially if you're considering doing a interested on going on to do graduate research, so maybe a Master of Philosophy or a Doctor of Philosophy, PhD or an MPhil. Um, in our speech, um, be really mindful about what the requirements are for the thesis option if there is one in your course. So have a really thorough read through what the course structure is um, for your program to get a bit of an understanding about what it is that you have to do. Um, so for majors, minors and specialisations, this will come up um, with if there are different entry points into a program. Um, so we'll have a look at the 200 example um, and under the structure, again, coordinated details are very important. Please do make sure that you take a note of them. And under the structure, again, it will tell you exactly what it is that you have to do but also show you the individual subjects. So if you are in the 200 point program of the Master of Marketing Communications, your first 50 credit points, so for semester one, 2022, you'd be doing these three subjects. But hang on a minute, How, why is it only three subjects? Again, be really careful of the credit points because this subject here is actually worth 25 credit points. So it's sort of a, a bigger subject, um, but it, doing three subjects would meet the full 50 credit points. Um, so be mindful of those. There's these compulsory subjects as well. You have to do these 75 credit points or 12.5. Um, you get to choose a couple of the, the 25 credit points, excuse me, worth of these um, as your core subjects. So you could either do consulting fundamentals and marketing research, which are both 12.5 credit points, or you could do a semester one intern, a semester long internship. So just be mindful of what those subjects are. Um, and it's also got the information about your minor thesis subjects. Um, and electives that you could choose from. You can also filter by study period. Um, so if we have a look at the semester one subjects, not that in the 200 credit point program, your semester one's already started. So that's let's look at semester two to see what you might be doing in semester two of 2022. So you can have a look at all of those different subjects, really fascinating specific subjects um, you can do there. I will also show you again the subject anatomy um, to see exactly what's going on. Um, again, the overview. Um, is, is really important. Um, and again, to reiterate, your study plan, where you actually go to enrol in your subjects, uh, will all say on campus, which is not correct. So the handbook is really where you need to go to understand um, whether or not a subject is delivered dual delivery, which means that there are some classes on campus for students that want them, um, but it will also be delivered completely online. So wherever you are, 
For a dual delivery subject or an online subject, you will be able to complete it for semester one 2022. Don't let this semester two put you off. Um, semester two delivery details haven't yet been confirmed. Um, so for now, we'll just focus on the semester one subjects um, and dual delivery or online if you are offshore. If you are onshore, dual delivery, absolutely you can preference um, on campus uh, subjects if on campus timetabling um, classes if you would like to but you don't have to um, so dual delivery the vast majority of our subjects will be dual delivery um, so you should be able to um, study again wherever you are in the world so just be mindful of the availability there um, the other thing again dates and times um, something to be uh, something to think of and we'll also have your subject coordinator details. Um, so your subject coordinator can give you more information if you are looking for more information about the content of a subject um, that your Dr. Meshram would be the best person to go to for marketing management and their contact details are there. Again, I would strongly encourage you in any interactions that you have with staff to include your full name and your student number um, and why you're contacting them. Oh, I read the handbook page and I have a, a question about a, this assessment or I have a question about the content here. Um, so those details are there. Again, there's specific content information. Um, your, co your subject coordinator is the best person to go to and their details are on the dates and times tab. You can have a cheeky look at uh, the assessment that you have to do throughout the semester um, and also what the weighting is um, and any additional details there. The other thing um, is also eligibility and requirements. So if a subject has any prerequisites, um, which means that you have to have studied a particular subject before this one, it will show here. Um, and co-requisites means that you have to take them at the same time. So for any of our graduate cohort who um, studied their undergraduate degree elsewhere, um, which I think will be the majority of you, and we're so, yeah, welcome to the community. Um, if there is a prerequisite, um, that is a level one, two or three, so an undergraduate level subject or even a graduate level subject, what you can do is actually contact the course coordinator to seek permission to enrol. So our student system will only recognise if they have um, University of Melbourne prerequisites, um, if you have done that exact University of Melbourne subject. But just because you haven't done that subject here at the University of Melbourne, doesn't mean you don't have the necessary background knowledge to succeed. Um, so if it did have a level three prerequisite as an example, and you think I've, I've done that in my undergraduate degree, you can reach out to the coordinator and say, Hi, like I would say, hi, um, coordinator, my name's Belinda and I'm a new Master of um, Marketing uh, Communication student. Um, this is what I did in my undergraduate degree and I would love to enroll into your subject, Marketing Management. Do you think I have an appropriate background to get into your subject? Um, and then if the coordinator says, yes, absolutely, come on in, um, you will be right to succeed. There's an online form that you can fill out called an enrollment variation form, um, which I'll show you in a sec. Um, and we can sort of um, do all the back of house stuff um, manually for you. Um, so just, just be mindful if there are prerequisites, you can, and you think you have the background knowledge that those prerequisites are, you can absolutely reach out to the coordinator of the subject to just say, hey, I really want to do your subject. This is my background. Um, can I please get your permission to enroll? So capstone course requirements um, and the contact information for your academics are the really important things to note from the handbook entries for your graduate courses. And then how do you actually choose your subjects? Quite similar to um, undergraduate, but there's a few little different ones interests. What are you interested in? What do you want to learn? What did you come here for? Um, I loved the, um, the talk about growing. You're here to grow and learn and develop as not only an academic, but also a person. Um, so what are you interested in? Another really important consideration is your pathway. Are you interested in coursework subjects and maybe doing an internship, some work integrated learning? Or is research really what you're after? Can you fit the thesis in? Is there a research subject that you can do as part of your degree to then potentially progress through to a PhD? 
Complementary subjects, again, this is where a conversation with your course coordinator or your subject coordinators can really help to understand the in-depth uh, content of each of the subjects and how they might fit together. Really important, I can't um, emphasize this enough, know what your capstone options are. Um, because sometimes you might need to enroll in prerequisite subjects now. Um, so just knowing what they, what your options are and how to keep them open is really important. And also career goals. Um, what is it that you're wanting to achieve from this graduate study um, is really important to keep in mind when you are thinking about the subjects that you are going to choose. Um, but the online handbook will give you a list of all of the different, if we subjects that you can choose from. So you have to do these subjects, but if we have a look at the electives, this is where you get to choose um, some subjects as part of your degree. So graduate degrees do tend to be a little bit more structured, um, but there's generally always um, at least a couple of electives that you can choose from. The faculty course planning resources, again, that, that's quite a lot to think about um, and navigate through. And I really, again, really strongly encourage you to spend quite a bit of time on the handbook entry for your course to really understand what it is that you need to get your at the end of your degree. Um, there's also um, helpful resources for uh, graduate courses as well, depending on the faculty that you're in. Um, so I'd really encourage you to have a look at that as well. Um, our interactive course planner is um, in its baby stages. It's brand new. Um, so at the moment, it is only for our undergraduate cohort, but we're working really hard behind the scenes to get the graduate courses, at least some graduate courses up there this year. Um, so not yet, but it is on its way. Lots of resources online. Again, lots of help as well. I would like to reiterate, if you have a problem that is impacting your ability to study, there will be a service to help you. Please reach out. Um, it's you, you know, as graduate students, um, that you do need to reach out for help. Sort of, it, it won't be um, all the help's there, but people won't necessarily check in with you all the time. Please do reach out for help. If you don't know where to go, um, you can contact Stop One, and we can direct you to the to the right place. Um, so please have a really good look at the student services directory. Again, health and welfare careers, especially there is an enormous amount of careers resources online for you to access. There's um, resume checkers um, and there's sort of industry stats and lots of different things. Um, and there's even job postings, grad programs, lots and lots of different um, resources, how to help, how to find an internship. If you do an intern internship subject, but you have to source your own internship, how do you even go about that? How do you cold call employers asking for an internship? Heaps of information online. Again, please have a look. I know there's a lot to go through, um, but please do take the time to familiarise yourself. So helpful um, and really, really important for your success. Again, another little plug. So I'm from the course planning team. Um, so we're the team that can help you navigate what you have left to do to complete your degree, if you can fit something in, if you can change direction. Um, so lots of information online. The form where you got permission to um, enter a subject where you don't have sort of the official University of Melbourne prerequisites, it's called an enrollment variation form. Um, so you just need to upload evidence of your email with your um, subject coordinator and we can make the changes in the background. Um, so that's something that we can't actually do in appointments. So the enrollment variation form is definitely the quickest way to get any study plan issues resolved. Um, and timetabling as well. Heaps of information online about timetabling, um, and I'd strongly recommend that you have a look at those resources um, before um, contacting the Stop One. But here we go, book an appointment. So you can either book an appointment. Um, at the moment, we are offering telephone appointments uh, and virtual appointments, so Zoom appointments, um, and we can dial internationally as well. Um, so if you are currently offshore, we can absolutely still give you a phone call. Um, again, very hot tip, uh, appointments for the day 
generally open at about 8.30 a.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. So if you log in then, um, you'll be able, you should be able to book an appointment for that day. But we are a very in-demand team because we are wonderful. Um, so if you can't book an appointment or you don't want to book an appointment, you can also submit an inquiry. Um, so that email will come to the team and we'll be able to provide advice um, through email for you. So lots of help. Please look at the handbook. Course planning is excellent. I will stop sharing um, and see if there are any burning questions. There absolutely are, Belinda. Um, I knew that our grads would have lots of questions. Just first up, we do use unique language at universities and we all use different language. Uh, one quick one, What's what exactly is a capstone subject? Uh, you mentioned it in there. Can you tell our audience all about that? Great question. Thank you, Zoe. I think I've been a bit institutionalised, so it rolls off the tongue. Mm -hmm. um, so a capstone subject really just indicates um, a big, juicy subject um, that gives you the opportunity to pull together everything that you've learned in your degree. Um, so it could be an internship um, where you are out in a company and go, oh, I remember learning this in this subject and that in that, that subject, or it could be a thesis. So again, all of the coursework that you had done pulled together into a research subject, or it could also be a core subject. It could be a big design studio for the Master of Architecture. Um, so they are built requirements of your course and they are designed for the very end. Again, little, little top of the pyramid, little cap, little cap for your stone. Um, so yeah, they, they're um, just a, a way to, to pull together everything that you've learned throughout your master's program. Brilliant. And sounds like it's going to be everyone's favourite subject that they look forward to. Now, um, we've got Jonathan in our audience out there in the world. Jonathan has asked, what are non-allowed subjects and why are they not allowed? And he also thanks you for your, for your answer that we are bound uh, to hear. You're welcome, Jonathan, in advance. Um, so a non-allowed subject is just a, um, if you have completed a non-allowed subject, it means that you're not allowed to enrol into a, a particular subject. Oh, but generally speaking, they're just older versions of the same subject. Um, so it's very rare that you will come across a non-allowed subject within your courses um, because they'll just sort of be old versions of the same subject. And that's why you're not allowed to do it, because if you've already done that subject, you don't want to do it again. So oh, non-allowed yeah. <laughs> non is, um, is, does mean if you have completed the equivalent of the non-allowed, which again is mainly only an old version of the subject, it's not something that I imagine that um, many people will come across at all. Brilliant to know, though, that we keep updating our subjects to make sure that they're relevant and we're able to continue pushing you. So brilliant. Now, we also have Tan Fung Chan has asked, uh, Belinda, am I allowed to take five subjects per semester for the graduate course? Or really, do you stick with four? Or I guess pro tip, your note about credit, uh, like the credit for subjects. So points. Great question. Um, so taking five subjects in a semester is what we call overloading. Um, overloading is hard. <laughs> I would absolutely not recommend it to anybody, especially at the graduate level, but it is an option for you to take um, 62.5 credit points in a semester. You're not allowed to overload in your very first semester. Um, and if you do want to overload, you have to have a, an, a, an average mark of 70. We, we don't want to set students up for any success. Um, so if you're sort of um, not getting an average mark of 70 at least, um, we don't think it, it's sensible for you to try to stack on another subject. Um, so I would recommend as much as possible to do 50 credit points in each semester. I would also recommend having a look at what your different options are to make use of intensive periods as well. So there might be subjects that are available in the summer term. So you do one summer term subject and then only three subjects or 37.5 credit points in semester one to spread out the load. Um, but, you, but there are certain conditions. I, I would personally avoid it where you can, um, 
grad study is hard. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that you need to do. And I would also strongly recommend that you keep time to do extracurricular stuff with clubs and societies. Um, and also be a human being. <laughs> Remember that you also need to do your yoga um, and take care of yourself as well. Brilliant. And make the most of life in the incredible city of Melbourne. And I think to um, graduate study, it's worth it because it is a challenge. So um, I think excellent advice from me there, Belinda. Now, Denise is say, asking, she's trying to allocate all my subjects in my timetable, but she's unable to. So eight of them are showing pending. Um, and when she tries to select a preference, she's getting the following message, single option only. Uh, and then it will be auto allocated for you during the sorting process. Um, and some are showing not allocated. Is she unable to select these or what can she do? Because I know she's not alone in this. So great question, Denise. So help us great. out. Yes, <laughs> great question. Um, so we are in what's called the preference for timetabling, where you go in and say, um, Best case scenario, I would like a class on my tutorial on Wednesday. If I don't get Wednesday, I'll do it on Thursday. If I don't get Thursday, I'll do it on Friday. Um, for some subjects, they will have classes where you don't actually have a choice. There's only one option, which is the single option only. Um, so you will be put into that class once we go into what's called the review and adjust period. So at the moment, it's just putting in what your ideal timetable would be like. Um, and then we get when we get to the review and adjust period, which I believe is the 10th of February, but don't quote me on that. It's all online. Um, that's when you can actually, you will get um, given what your timetable is, but you can still change it. Um, so in the review and adjust period, you'll be able to change your classes into other classes that still have space. <clears throat> um, and allocating subjects to the online version um, is how you will be able to study, <clears throat> excuse me, online. Brilliant. So pending is absolutely fine. Um, because once we get to the, it will, uh, the algorithm will do its magic. Um, and I'm very pleased to report that I believe percent of students got their first preferences for everything. I don't know how it works. It's absolutely magic. Um, but yes, the, the algorithm does a very good job. So um, if it's single uh, option only, you will be put into that particular class. Um, and pending is okay um, because it will sort itself out once the um, the algorithm's done its thing. Brilliant. So you're saying trust the algorithm <laughs> and yeah. if you need any help afterwards, you'll then be able to follow up and get some advice. Absolutely. So I've got another wonderful question. I think it's a great one to end it on. You gave a wonderful plug for your team. Plug is a bit of an Australian term for a promotion, just in case people want to know what, what language is she speaking. Um, Kianyu asks a perfect question. Um, so... When can our audience, our new students, book the one-on-one -on -one appointments to talk through their majors, to talk through their specialisations, to talk through their subject selections? When can they come to your team for one-on-one -on -one appointments? Great question. Um, as soon as you are an admitted student, so you have accepted your offer, come on in. Uh, you can book an appointment. Again, um, we do open appointments at 8.30 a.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time um, every morning. Uh, there are some, some that are um, added in the future, but most of our availability will be open on the day. So as soon as you've sort of got your University of Melbourne username and login, you can book an appointment. But I would please really strongly encourage you to have a look at all of the resources online so we can have a really robust conversation about what it is that you want to achieve um, rather than going through the, the basics that are online. If you don't understand the basics, absolutely fine. Come on in. Of course, we'd love to speak to you. But I'd really encourage you to come, to come as prepared as possible so we can have a really excellent discussion. Wonderful. And I think everyone's seen just how passionate you are about helping students be on the right path, be on track. So basically, if you're ever feeling a bit confused about anything, if you've got the right number of subjects that you're matching everything you need to do, you can't go wrong if you come and meet with Belinda and her team. So Belinda, I would love to say a very big thanks on behalf of myself and our audience throughout the world um, for everything that you've shown us. It's been super helpful. And I think that it's probably 
um, made a lot of things make sense for people. So thank you so much. And um, many of you will get to meet her one-on-one -on -one and say hello when you see yes. online or on camera. Thanks. <laughs> thank you. Me. Thank you so much for having me. And again, a huge big welcome. Really hope to see all of you on campus at some stage soon. <laughs> thank you. Brilliant. Okay, that brings us to the end of this session where we focused on setting you up for academic success. So you've heard some great study tips, tricks, all the advice and support available, and you've seen just how much help you can get with choosing your subjects, enrolling in subjects and course planning. And I think the theme overall is ask for help. Coming up soon, you will have your Melbourne commencement ceremonies where you get to feel a uh, really big moment in your lives marked as you get to have another official welcome to the University of Melbourne. You're part of us already. I've really loved getting to spend this time with you. But for those of you that want more, we do have in an hour's time a special session tonight and it is on dual delivery. And you will have heard about subjects being online and on campus. We're going to talk through how that happens because we know many of you um, will be choosing whether you're in Australia or in your home country some of those subjects. How does it work? What's it like? And we'll give you some great insights. I've got an excellent academic expert and we've got some brilliant students from undergraduate and graduate. But overall, from me to you and all of the chatters behind the scenes that I want to give a special shout out to, thank you for helping our students Woman Jika, reach out and I do hope to see many of you very soon for the dual delivery.